place in my bedroom. I wasn't sure that I was going to actually be able to have time to record this week so I thought I would try to fit it in where I can. Um, yeah so we're all friends and here we are. Um, this is my vlog about knitting and crocheting and uh, other crafting that I do and how I fit it into my everyday life which usually involves recycling, reusing, grabbing what I have on hand and in my stash to make beautiful objects. Um, other places you can find me include uh, Doll Belly on Instagram and uh, Ravelry and I have a Facebook page uh, Doll Belly Knits and um, there's also a group uh, in Ravelry uh, also under the same name of Doll Belly Knits. So um, yeah, a lot of things happening, um, a lot of things happening for me uh, in my life, um, and a lot of things happening in the fiber community, um, and I was out and about uh, being the um, soccer mom slash chauffeur for uh, the kids, um, and I did a little bit of recording in the car. Uh, where I talked a little bit about some of the recent things that have been going on in the fiber community. So I will insert that here. Okay, so the lighting in here is crazy because I am sitting in uh, the parking lot of the Aldi waiting for them to open. I got like 30 minutes to kill sitting here in the car working on the flip-flop socks yeah. oh yeah another thing that I was thinking about recently I haven't really talked or made myself you know voice my opinions politically or whatever you want to call them about all the stuff that's been going on in the fiber community just I don't I don't feel the need to explain or defend myself to anybody, so I just don't hop in on that. Um, I think it's horrible, obviously, that people can't be all-inclusive and nice to each other um, in general. Not even, you know, are we doing knitting? Are we doing crocheting? What do, like, just in general. How about, in general, just try not to be a butthole? Yeah, I think that's, you know, pretty much a code that one can live by but there was all this stuff going on um, um gg made it she had put it out there at least for me that's how i came to um, start thinking about it that um, there is a divide between crocheters and knitters um and we're not sure why that is a lot of crocheters have voiced that they feel shunned by knitters um i do both crafts. Um, I do choose to knit um, things like socks, you know, um, versus crochet them because of the um, type of fabric I can get with knitting versus crocheting um, in general. I mean, I'm sure you could figure it out with crocheting too, but so anyway, um, in in joining her conversation, I had thought maybe the issue or the possible issue between um, knitters and crocheters could be financially related. Um, crocheting tends to use like 
three times the amount of yarn that knitting does. So making a sweater out of hand dyed yarn is going to be cost prohibitive. Like it's just not going to be possible. So I think maybe crocheters tend to go towards, um, I mean, like I know I would choose to pick a um, fiber that was more cost effective if I was going to crochet because I know I'm going to use three times as much as I am um, if I knit. So I had thought that like maybe it's just really a, a cost thing and then people kind of get a little snooty like oh I'm using hand dyed yarn and or maybe they feel knitters feel like crocheters can't support them um, and dyers I mean dyers in a sense that like they can't support them in their industry because they can't afford to purchase that much hand dyed or you know cashmere um, to crochet an object because it would just be three times as much as a knitter would but anyway um, part of you know a couple Facebook groups and there's a crochet group that I'm part of well apparently there was some big brouhaha that I missed completely that there were some crocheters in the group that were posting um, weekly updates to the Aldi um, offerings on that week. Aldi switches its stock every Thursday or something like that. And in addition to food, Aldi does uh, sell non-food items, including you'll find fabric, uh, like fat, fat quarter type fabrics, and you know, other things, and yarn, they have some yarn. So people were posting like, oh, the, the new sale adds out, you can get this on sale, you can get that on sale. Apparently there were some crocheters that were A, ticked off that people were letting other people in the group know that the new sale items were out. B, calling the yarn crap and that it was cheap and worthless and like criticizing it and thereby criticizing the people who use it. So... I mean, like, I missed the whole thing, but I woke up to a message from a new moderator because apparently other moderators were kicked out of the group, and she's now taken over, and she was like, look, we're not going to have any more of this nonsense. If you want to talk about your yarn from Aldi, talk about your yarn from Aldi. Please don't post, you know, 10 times that the new sale is out because that does get annoying, but... Um, we're not going to discriminate against yarn or how much it costs and I will boot you out of the group if I find that this is happening because I don't have time for this nonsense which I agree nonsense right so it brought me back to my thought that I guess it's not financially based either the difference between the two or you know the divide that some people are feeling between crocheting and knitting it certainly is something to think about. That's why I said to Gigi that this is, you know, something to think about. Because um, you want to be all inclusive. I mean, we're all making stuff. We're literally using our hands to transform materials into something else. We're all, that's what you're doing. Whether you're basket weaving, crocheting, knitting, leather working, whatever. It doesn't, like, you are using your hands to take something and make it into something completely new and different and and you know transforming it it's a completely different object from when you start it so what does it matter you know and again i think it comes back to like how about how about you just not be a butthole how about that you know think about things before you post them it's so easy to type something into the computer and hit enter and not think about the impact that you're having on the other side of the screen because you're not facing the person on the other side of the screen. You wouldn't say that to that person's face. Then don't type it into the computer. Just don't do it. That's the end of my public service announcement. <laughs> yeah, so don't be a butthole. I think that's pretty good advice that everybody can live by. Um, yeah. Again, in case you've just tuned in, <laughs> I am in my bedroom, in my bed, I got my PJs on. These are actually, these are actually a pair of pajamas that were my grandfather's. Um, 
we used to buy him pajamas like for every occasion. Um, so he had quite a few of them that were still in the packages when he passed away. Um, so I snagged me um, a set and they're, uh, yeah, I like them. I wear them. They're comfortable. Maybe not the most attractive thing to wear to bed, but you know, hey ho, I want to be comfortable. Um, let's work some progress. I want to get right into knitting. I've been rambling, I think, enough uh, at this point in time. Uh, I am working on the Betsy jumper still. Um, this is the back here. I'm almost done. Um, I think I got maybe like one or two more rows and then I can cast off and be done the back. I'm at the point where I have to do a lot of measuring so I kind of like don't like that because I feel like I can only knit like two rows because of course you're supposed to finish on a wrong side row. So I knit a right row and a wrong side row and then I gotta lay it down and I gotta measure it. And I'm having a little trouble measuring it because it is um, a ribbing. So it's like I want to stretch it out a little bit to make sure that I'm getting the right measurement and sometimes I feel like I get a different measurement every time I lay it down. So um, that's a little bit annoying but I think that's just part of the process uh, when you're working with fabric that is ribbed and you know that you're trying to make a fitted garment so that the measurements are correct. But I am almost done the back and then I will start on the front and um, I know that'll go fast. It's once you get down to the shoulder and the neck shaping that's when I start to slow down a little bit because I gotta like pay more attention and I can't just knit 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 knit. Um, so yeah I am really enjoying that. I'm looking forward to wearing it um, and you know spring spring is here sometimes I'm not sure about that but uh, it should be the perfect sweater for spring and into summer uh, for the UK. Uh, other works in progress uh, include the Green Beast, the C2C blanket um, that I've been working on for like probably a year now at this point in time because um, I made it and it fits it fits comfortably on an American queen size bed so it is really large and it is rather heavy but um, it's been all shades of green um, and that was the pattern from the get-go um, and I've been using stuff in stash my mom sent me some of her stuff for stash from her uh, some yarn from her stash um, and I almost messed it up um, I had this skein that did have some greens in it but it was mostly blue and I was actually considering putting it in there but I took a poll um, uh, on the uh, group that I'm part of on Facebook, um, the most amazingly epic crochet group. Um, and everybody was really honest and they were like, yeah, don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> I mean, it would have looked fine no matter what, but it definitely would have messed up the green flow that I had going on. So I'm glad that I didn't do that and I um, carried on with um, uh, another varig it was a the variegated yarn. It was another variegated yarn that was basically all green uh, in nature. So I'm still working on that. Um, what else am I working on? Uh, flip flop socks, fairy tale scarf, all those things are still works in progress that I've been you know picking up and putting down and just I feel like I'm doing circuit training with the knitting and the crocheting I'm just you know round robin going from project to project um, oh and the, the other work in progress that I have is the um, project that I am making for hubby's birthday which i've been sharing progress pictures on uh, facebook and instagram so uh, if you're interested to know what that is uh, go ahead and take a look over there but in accordance with that um, i did just try a new crochet technique um, that i had seen on youtube um, and i think that may be incorporated into the project um, somehow um, but it was how to crochet two rows at a time 
and um, I will insert the um, link uh, in the description box below. Of course, any person or place or pattern or yarn or uh, needle or notion that I talk about, I put in the show notes in the description box uh, below. And I also put them on the Ravelry group. Um, don't really go on Ravelry very often. Um, to be honest, I just, I do keep track of all my projects on there. I put notes. I mean, I do use it um, as the tool that it's intended to be. Um, but I don't really get on there um, that much for um, the purposes of this podcast or um, to chat with um, people. Not very many people do. I don't think really all the chatting seems to happen um, either here on YouTube or on Instagram or Facebook, which is fine. But anyway, um, if you're a Ravelry, that's, well, I can't really say that. If you do use Ravelry, um, you can find show notes there as well. Um, anyway, so this was crochet two rows at a time, and it was actually two rows of double crochet at a time. And because of the way that it's done, the stitches look sliced a little bit, which actually is a really nice uh, feature uh, of that. And it does, like, it basically grows to double crochet, um, U.S. double crochet um, at a time. The issue with that is that the ends are a little wonky, and I think I might have figured out how to fix that as well. So um, I was testing that a little bit um, on, on Mothering Day. It was Mother's Day this past Sunday here in the UK. Um, so I did what I normally do, um, you know, dishes, laundry, cooking, uh, <laughs> but made sure I had a little bit of me time and I used that to uh, practice this particular technique. And I really liked the way that it looked. And I think um, by, instead of doing it the way that she says to do it, um, if you use like a, a chainless double crochet to start the row, that seems to help to keep things from bulging um, on the sides. But anyway, I thought that was neat, so I thought that I would share that uh, with y'all, um, so you can check that out for yourself. Um, what else am I working on? Oh, yep, I'm just about done all of my, well, I am done. I am done all my swatches for the Craft Yarn Council um, Certified Instructor Program. I may do one or two of them over again before I send it off. Um, but you have to do swatches, and now I'm just finishing up with uh, writing up my lesson plans and providing a example of what the finished uh, project would be uh, for that for those lesson plans um, if I was teaching a class. So then it'll just be time to package them up and send that off, and. Um, yeah, hopefully that will go off without a hitch. Um, they want you to label everything and uh, put them into individual little packages and stuff. Um, so um, we'll see how that goes. I um, have seen several. There's a there's a group on Facebook if you're part of the program, um, and there have been several people who have posted what it is that they did and how they packaged it up. And actually, I think one of the administrators of the group has given kind of better instructions because I was a little bit worried about all that. So I think that'll be fine. And then I will have my certification and that'll be great. I'm looking forward to that um, and finishing that process up. Um, What else? Oh, well, so that was all the works in progress, probably. Um, finished objects. Uh, my mom's socks, obviously, I showed them last time, but I did um, send them off to her, and she got them in the mail, and she sent me pictures of them on her feet, uh, <laughs> which is always nice. Um, I think they are a little tight uh, on her, um, so I gave her some instructions on how maybe she could stretch them by wetting them and, you know, uh, 
stretching them out maybe on a, a foot, um, a shoe, shoe stretcher or something like that because she doesn't have a sock blocker. Um, and she's probably not going to make a sock blocker just for this. But um, this is where my, I, can't, I wouldn't say inexperience in knitting, but because I'm always knitting socks with the same type of um, wool, um, and the same, the same needles, you know, like I'm always talking about the premier brand wool free sock yarn and I use 3.75 millimeter needles. I think I'm starting to, you know, encounter maybe I didn't, uh, guesstimate right in terms of what would actually fit on her foot. Um, although I followed, I did a gauge swatch because of that. I followed the instructions for the correct size. They may be a little tight because it's a lot of twisted stitches. So, um, but it's her favorite color. She's very happy. It, the pattern is gorgeous. The yarn is great. Um, yeah, I ordered more yarn from Dye Candy uh, for, for the girls for this year for their socks. Um, so yeah, um, just gonna have to keep working on that and you know perfecting my working with wool versus not um, wool-free product in the sock knitting uh, arena. So practice makes perfect. That just means I have to knit more socks. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Uh, oh yeah. Um, I, I, sorry, I keep looking away because I'm like immensely thinking about all the things I wanted to say. Um, I usually have show notes in front of me, but really just wanted to hop in here and um, give you guys an update in the past two weeks. And we had the giveaway um, where I gave away a ball of uh, wool uh, online. Um, um, was it, I think it was Superwash wool. And it was like 150 grams instead of a 100 gram ball, and it was direct from Germany. So I had the giveaway and picked a winner, and that box is in the mail. Um, so be on the lookout for that, Erin. Um, it's coming your way. That was really fun, though. The whole lead up and the anticipation of the giveaway, and you know, getting the name and. That was just really exciting and really fun and I like I'm already thinking about what the possible next giveaway could be because um, I really enjoyed doing that and I think everybody enjoyed participating and at least I hope everybody did uh, and uh, yeah it was just it was more fun than I, I even thought it would be um, to give something away so uh, glad I could do that, and I will be thinking about the next one to um, put together. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see uh, how that goes. Uh, yeah, I actually think that's about it. This is definitely going to be a short one, and I hope everybody can hear me because I am kind of whispering because it's late at night and um, in my bed. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, still doing the works in progress, still trying to, like I said, kind of like circuit training, go from project to project to try and finish these up because, you know, you got, I got deadlines coming for some of them. I'm going to have to start other projects um, because they'll have deadlines as well. Like my daughter's birthday is coming up, so I'm going to have to start her socks and get that done for the deadline. Hubby's birthday, I'm going to have to get that done for the deadline. The Green Beast has a deadline, so I'm really just trying to not be bored with what I'm doing, but also meet the deadlines that I have in place for myself. Um, and then I guess that's why, because I have so many works in progress, I only had, you know, that one finished object recently, which was my mom's socks to show. And additionally, I don't even have any magical memories to share. Um, really have just been, you know, nose to the grindstone with uh, house and home and school but uh, it is half term break starting at, you know for us so 
we will have, uh, it's a really long break for them. Uh, it's like two and a half weeks they have off. So uh, we'll have Easter. Hopefully we'll get in a trip. Um, and then when I come back, I will have at least one, if not more, magical Murray to share. And um, oh, yeah. And then I'll be able to share the yarn I bought too. Yeah. Yeah. Next episode's going to be great. <laughs> this one, maybe not so much, but hopefully you still tuned in uh, and came back to hear me rant a little bit. Because uh, I do like doing these videos. I like sharing with you guys. I like uh, connecting with you on social media. Been really meeting a lot of new people and talking to a lot of other makers. And it's just been, um, yeah. It's been a really great experience for me, so I'm going to keep on trucking, even if I have to do it in my PJs in my bed. Okay, everybody, that's it for me. I'm going to sign off for now. Uh, in the meantime, I hope that you stay healthy and well. I hope you get in some good making, whether it's crocheting or knitting or whatever it is, and that the next time I see you, I will have some magical memories to share. And you will have made some magical memories of your own. See you next time. Bye.